and I'm so happy to welcome you to session nine of our formation series, Respect the Dignity of All, Kids Engaging Racial Equity. Our song and prayer will be led by Chaplain Ben Guerin and some friends from the Beloved in the Desert community in Tucson. Our song is called God's Love is for Everybody. Let us pray. God, I praise you. God, help me let your love into my heart. God, help me to care for others. God, help me to rest. Amen. Hi, this is Sarah from St. Barnabas. Welcome. When a person is baptized in our church, they and the whole church make promises. And one of those promises is to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Through this series, we are learning how to respect the dignity of all people and love each other as Jesus taught us to do. Some weeks we talk about an idea or question. Other weeks we talk about something from the Bible. And every week we hear stories. Last week and this week our theme is connection. We begin with a Bible verse from 1 Corinthians 12, 26, which says, If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. As we think about this verse, let's also think about what we have been talking about in our previous sessions together. We have talked about seeing ourselves and the similarities and differences we share with others. We have talked about how God wants us to show justice and mercy towards others and about how we are connected to our environment and to each other. Today is about connection, community, empathy, and seeing perspectives of ourselves and others. In this verse, God is telling us that if one person is suffering, then everyone suffers. An example of this is the way people of color are treated in the United States. When someone is treated unfairly, hurt, or killed because of the color of their skin, it hurts our whole society. Maybe you have seen how people have been working together around the country to stand up for each other as allies recently. Another word for that is solidarity. Racism doesn't affect everyone in the same way, but we can all stand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter or Native sovereignty movements, for example. 
and we can be in solidarity with environmental justice issues too. Think about an issue like climate change. Humans polluting the air causes the gases in the atmosphere to change. As the climate changes, places on earth get hotter and drier. As it gets hotter and drier, fires are more likely to burn the land. When fires burn, they destroy homes of people and animals alike. Fires also destroy food sources and people and animals can get seriously hurt or be killed. Every action affects others because we are all connected. God also tells us in this verse from 1 Corinthians that if something good happens to one person, then it is good for everyone. Today, we're going to hear about two different role models who understand that when we seek justice and rights for one group of people, everyone benefits from that justice. And when we take action to protect the environment, everything in that environment benefits. And just like we talked about how God communicates through the stormy feeling that happens inside us when we see injustice or experience it ourselves, when we work together or stand in solidarity, we might feel that sunny feeling too. That means something is good. The first role model is Greta Thunberg. At the age of eight, Greta from Stockholm, Sweden, learned about climate change, how it impacts the planet and the projected outcomes if human practices didn't change. Greta could not understand why people weren't taking more action to address something so critical. Over the next few years, she became preoccupied with the subject the, to the point of becoming depressed. For a period of time, she stopped eating and speaking. Greta was diagnosed with having Asperger's syndrome, a milder form of autism, obsessive compulsive disorder, and selective mutism. In 2018, at the age of 15, Greta won a climate change essay contest. Three months later, she decided to take further action. Inspired by students of the high school in Florida who walked out of school to demand action on gun violence, she decided that she would use the same tactic to demand action on climate change. Greta sat alone on the steps of the Swedish parliament every day for three weeks holding a sign that read, School Strike for Climate. She demanded that Sweden meet the carbon emissions target that they had committed to in the Paris Agreement of 2015. She posted pictures of her one-person climate strike on social media and encouraged other youth to follow suit. Her call to action took off and inspired youth around the world to host their own climate strikes. These international youth-led climate strikes became known as Fridays for Future. Greta became a sought-after public speaker on climate change. She has spoken out in the media, met with world leaders, and addressed the United Nations Climate Change Conference in both 2018 and 2019. Her manner is very forthright. She is straightforward and uses strong statements. In part, due to Greta's mobilization of youth around the world, the September 2019 UN Climate Change Conference was met with millions of people worldwide demonstrating to demand action on this issue. Greta focuses her efforts on holding governments accountable. In particular, she addresses how wealthier Predominantly white countries have contributed the most to climate change, while economically poorer nations have been affected the most. She argues that for this reason, wealthy countries have the biggest responsibility in limiting their own carbon emissions so that other nations have the opportunity to develop needed infrastructure. Greta sees her Asperger syndrome as a superpower in her fight for climate action. Because of it, she can sit for long periods to learn about her interests. It gives her a determined focus when it comes to this issue. She can accept nothing other than immediate, meaningful action. She said, we showed that we are united and that we young people are unstoppable. Here's a short video about Greta. Jerome 
Foster II, age 18, is a climate activist, voting rights advocate, and virtual reality developer from Washington, D.C. He has helped to organize three out of the 10 most attended climate marches in Washington, D.C. At the age of 14, he founded his own virtual reality company. He has used this platform to code programs that allow people to experience firsthand the devastations of climate change and environmental destruction. Jerome believes that raising awareness through education is key to creating change. At the age of 15, he started the youth climate blog, Climate Reporter, with the goal of informing people about climate change and environmental issues. Jerome also believes in the power of creating change through voting. He is executive director of One Million Us, which is a youth advocacy organization that encourages youth to vote. Jerome said, one person, one vote is the great equalizer of humanity. My mission is to show that we have the power to create a more just democracy that represents all of us. as a programmer to develop a creative way in which people might experience the effects of environmental destruction themselves. He did this as a way to educate, but also as a way to provide a sense of empathy. Greta As Greta's Asperger syndrome allows her to focus on what she is passionate about and gives her drive to take action. She uses this unique attribute to advocate for climate justice and inspire others to do the same. We all have unique attributes, skills, and talents. What are some of yours? How might you be able to use your unique gifts to make a difference in the lives of others? Hi, I'm Debbie from St. Peter's in Litchfield Park. Reuben Goldberg, who lived from 1883 to 1970, was a famous American cartoonist and engineer. He was well known for his cartoons depicting complicated devices that were used to perform very simple tasks. These became known as Rube Goldberg machines. An example of one of his cartoon machines was a mouse trap, in which a mouse lunges for a picture of cheese goes through the picture and lands on a hot stove, jumps from the stove onto a block of ice, which happens to be on a moving escalator. The escalator, not attached to anything, carries the mouse and ice up to the top. The escalator drops the mouse onto a boxing glove attached to a spring, which knocks the mouse into a basket, which triggers a miniature rocket, which launches the mouse to the moon. This fun idea took hold, and over the years, it became incorporated into commercials, TV shows, and movies as a bit of comic relief. People also began to participate in Rube Goldberg machine contests and challenges. This week, we are going to have our own Rube Goldberg machine challenge. Why? Well, our theme for the day is connection. A Rube Goldberg machine is a chain reaction, a sequence of connected events where the actions of one step trigger a connected step, which then triggers another connected step, and so on. This can also be a metaphor for human connections and the impact that we can have on one another. So, your challenge this week, thinking of the environmental theme that has run throughout our curriculum, Use a minimum of five steps to knock an empty toilet paper roll into a recycle bin. If you don't have an empty toilet paper roll, feel free to find a different item to be recycled. Some common components of Rube Goldberg machines are things like balls, tracks, pulleys, levers, and dominoes. It's up to you how you approach it or if you use all these elements. 
if you need a little inspiration, examples of balls could be balls or marbles, oranges, blueberries, a tape roll, it rolls too. Examples of tracks could be toy train or car tracks, um, book edges, curved cardboard, pipes, rails, made by a pair of objects such as chopsticks or cooking utensils. Um, examples of dominoes could be, well, dominoes, but also books, blocks, candy bars, strings and cups are examples of pulleys. And popsicle sticks and pencils are just one way to approach levers. I would encourage you to see what you can build. But if you're an artist at heart and are more inspired by what outlandish system you can dream of and illustrate, then go ahead and draw a cartoon. If you haven't done this before, I would suggest you watch some videos because A, they might help you get started if you're stuck and B, they are so much fun. There are links to a couple under this video for inspiration. Here's the Rube Goldberg machine that I built. Let me show you the steps and then we can see if it works. So there's a lever. We push the lever. It jostles this marble. The marble travels down the tube, hits the other marble. They both travel down the track to this cup, which attached to a string, turns over this cup with a bigger marble, which rolls down, hits the car, and the car pushes the toilet paper roll into the recycle bin. So let's try it. Woo! Leo's in Chiania Vu. My name is the Reverend Canon Debbie Royals. I'm the vicar for St. Raphael in the Valley Episcopal Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona. I'm also the canon for Native American ministry in the Diocese of Arizona. Today, we explored multiple ways that actions are connected. We started with our Bible verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, which says, if one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. We learned about role models Greta Thunberg and Jerome Foster II and how they used their talents and skills to advocate for people and governments to take action against climate change we thought about our own talents and skills and how we might use them to help others. This week, as we work to complete the Rube Goldberg Challenge, we will see how one action can cause another action. This can help us to visualize how we are connected and how social justice issues are connected. It also helps us to visualize how what we do can affect others. What are one or two ideas you have for how you could use your talents and skills to help others? Let's pause the video and discuss. closing song is New World Coming. There's a new world coming, it's already here. There's a new world on its way. There's a new world coming, it's already here. Let's begin to live that way. Can you imagine the big bad wolf making friends with the lamb? Every creature in harmony with a little child leading them. 
There's a new world coming, it's already here. There's a new world on its way. There's a new world coming, it's already here. Let's begin to live that way. Can you imagine the city streets full of health and joy? Old men and women who live in peace and the laughter of girls and boys. There's a new world coming, it's already here. There's a new world on its way. There's a new world coming, it's already here. Let's begin to live that way. Can you imagine the world restored? Earth and heavens too. Right at home with the one who says, I am making all things new. There's a new world coming, it's already here. There's a new world on its way. There's a new world coming, it's already here. Let's begin to live that way. Let's begin to live that way. Please join me for our closing prayer. I'll say one line and you can say it after me. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Everywhere I am, God is. Amen. Mm -hmm.